Hi, I'm Ellis. I work as a collections trainee at, here at the Wordsworth Trust. And I'm here to talk to you today about our newly digitised online collection, uh, our Thomas Buick manuscript collection. And uh, we're excited to share this with you because Thomas Buick, if you're not aware, is a hugely significant figure in terms of, of art, in terms of natural history, and particularly with regards to wood engraving. Now, you may not be aware of him, but he's actually hugely significant and probably has impacted on your life somehow, especially in regard to how you view natural history and the wildlife around you. To have access to this hugely important cultural figure's personal manuscripts, his business letters, and his correspondence, we think is quite exciting. Today, this video, I'm going to show you uh, the collection. I'm going to introduce you to Thomas Buick as well, uh, and then I'm going to show you a few highlights from our collection as well. In terms of celebrity, Thomas Buick could be viewed as the David Attenborough of the 18th century. Uh, now, he created field guides, which ordinary people could take into a field and, and look at a robin and realise that that is actually a robin. So his first field guide was actually a general history of quadrupeds, and um, this focused, again, on quadrupeds, so four-legged animals of the world. Now, Thomas Buick was from the Tyne Valley, outside of Newcastle, so he'd never seen a rhino. So a lot of the work was based upon things he'd seen in travelling circuses or other books as well. Uh, now that was followed by a history of British birds in 1797. And again, that was based on the success of this first one. And these really made an impact. Initially, it was based on land birds, and then he moved on to water birds as well. Uh, now these are hugely significant because what they did is they, they captured a nation's imagination and they kind of begun Britain's love affair with wildlife. These works shot Thomas Buick to fame uh, in the 18th century, and he's actually featured in Charlotte Bronte's Jane Eyre. Jane Eyre, young Jane Eyre, is shown holding a history of British birds, and she says, with Buick on my knee, I was then happy. And William Wordsworth, as well, also wrote a poem about Thomas Buick, or including Thomas Buick, called The Two Thieves. In that, William Wordsworth essentially says that if he had half the skill of Thomas Buick, he wouldn't bother doing any poetry or writing any poetry. And indeed, it's that connection, that envy, and a clear influence upon Wordsworth that brought these papers to the Wordsworth Trust. Buick and William Wordsworth shared an interest in telling tales of the ordinary person, of the common man. Now, whereas Wordsworth used poetry as his medium to get this message across, uh, Thomas Buick carved tale pieces, so little tiny vignettes to fill the spaces at the bottom of the pages of his books, of his works. And in it, we can see little scenes of, of social history, really, of, of the common person going about their daily business. Much like William Wordsworth's poetry, these tale pieces are little observations, are, are lyrical. They observe the shortcomings of human nature, as well as their triumphs. And so we at the Wordsworth Trust will be looking at this connection. We'll be looking at how Thomas Buick uh, influenced the Romantic generation, the generation that gave us the Romantics, as well as his direct influence upon people like William Wordsworth. Thomas Buick was actually first and foremost an engraver, an artist, one of the best of his age really, and in many ways he revived the art, the form of wood engraving. However, to make his living he actually uh, ran an engraving workshop, mostly using copper, and so to pay for his kind of art, his, his kind of creativity, his focus on, on British birds and things like that. He actually had to receive orders and create just general engravings for the general public and businesses. Now in this manuscript, before me here, we've actually got a letter written to Thomas Buick by a printer, by a printer called William Bowley. Now this shows the kind of order that Thomas Buick would get from the general public. And what this is, is a series of drawings and William Bowley asking Thomas Buick, how much would it cost for you to engrave these on wood? And so what this shows is that he's a jobbing, jobbing worker. He's not first and foremost an artist. He has to, he has to work for his living and to work for the time for, for creativity. So on this, you can see little pencil sketches of lions, of a man leading a horse away. And these, these drawings would be turned into engraving. They would have been used on, on bar bills, of newspaper headings and kind of functional things like that. So what this shows really is that Thomas Buick was really at work. He was, a, he was a hard grafter to earn his money, to actually buy time to be creative and complete his natural history works. So here we have a copy of Thomas Buick's uh, History of British Birds, published in 1797. And in this book, there are hundreds of tiny engravings 
little images of these birds. Now they are incredibly small. So the question is how did Thomas Buick print these? How did he create such a small print? And actually he used wood engravings and he engraved into boxwood these tiny little images here. Now these engravings are the size of the pictures, the prints in this book. So they're incredibly detailed and it's such an incredibly hard skill to master. And this here is actually a woodcut of a siskin. And in fact, this wood with this woodcut here would actually have been used to print the siskin into this book here in 1797. So this is hugely significant. Now it's this kind of detail and this skill of Thomas Buick's that marked him out as an incredible artist, as an incredible engraver. And this actually attracted the attention of people from outside the natural history world, uh, hoping to use his skills for other things. Now we're going to show you a manuscript in which a letter sent to Thomas Buick by a banker, uh, in which he requests Thomas Buick's skills to try and help develop a new anti-forgery technique in the world of banknotes. So this is a letter sent to Thomas Buick by the banker Sir John Sinclair, uh, the man who would go on to coin the phrase statistics. So quite an important uh, figure. Now, in this letter, he's asking Thomas Buick, he's requesting that Thomas Buick create a, an engraving, a figure this size here, this small circle sized here, so that they could print this onto banknotes. And because it'd be engraved by Thomas Buick, the skill would be so inimitable and hard to recreate that it surely would prevent any forgeries. Everyone would know that that's a forged banknote if it was a really bad engraving. And so this is hugely significant again in that it shows that Thomas Buick is now famous nationwide and he's been requested to do all kinds of things with his skills, not just art and, and natural history. We at the Words with Trust are lucky to be able to work with these manuscripts and documents uh, whenever we want here in Grasmere. However, now so can you. You can look at them whenever you want as well and you needn't come all the way to Grasmere to do so. Largely thanks to help from the Friends of the National Libraries for enabling us to digitise these documents and have these freely available to you online at the Wordsworth Trust website, of which the link is in the description below, and you can click on that and explore at your, at your leisure. Now, whether or not your interest is in Thomas Buick as an engraver or as an artist or as a natural historian, these are just great documents to look at and, and pour through. But also, if you're interested in, in Georgian history in general, they're worth, worth a look for a great insight into that period in time as well. So thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. Please do like, share and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.